Hello everybody, this is Bud and in this video we will configure XFCE in our systemd uh, desktop session thing. So let's just log in to our session here and see where we are. Yeah, we just start i3 now. God damn it. Sometimes triggers the host key bindings. Um, um, we can do this system CTL user status and that would show us the status of the current user uh, D system D daemon here and here we can see that i3 the service is started and also some sub processes that that in turn uh, handles i3 bar i3 status and xfc4 terminal the program we look at now we also have the mate poll kit service which we configured in the last video and our doing our daemon service and then there are some uh, pre-configured or set up uh, things here that is set up in the systemd system files all right but now we want to also start xfce panel and the package name and the application name as well is xfce4 panel so make sure to install this package and when it is installed you should be able to execute this command you can see it takes a very very long time and then it starts the panel the reason it takes a very very long time is uh, we can see the errors here fail to connect to session manager and no window manager registered we can actually fix these issues by enabling some additional command line options we can see sm client disable disable session management and disable wm check to not wait for a window manager on startup adding these command line options will make the, this much faster so client disable and wm no disable wm check starts immediately great so let's create a systemd unit file for this open leaf pad create a unit description xfce4 panel service exec start is equal to this command and I really like to do it like this, uh, that you execute the command in a terminal, make sure that it works, that there are no typos in the command, and then paste that command into the unit file here. Um, then I also like to add restart on failure to this. So save that in our systemd uh, configuration, user configuration here in .config systemd user. We save it as xfce4 panel dot service and if everything is working now we should be able to start this with systemctl user start xfce4 panel and it works it starts the panel and it stops the panel if we want to uh, i can also show you how this restart on failure works here if we open uh, a task manager I like to use LX task because it works really well in a small window like this um, here we can see the process xfce4 panel if I kill this process yes kill it you see it just pops up again because we have restart on failure uh, systemd consider this like a failure when it is uh, terminated outside of systemd's control so to speak like it is here now and this would also this is like if this would crash the same thing would happen you know it automatically restarts it it's uh, it's kind of a neat feature but it's also important uh, to understand this that uh, you really want to stop these processes uh, with systemd if they were started with systemd um, now we can just add this to our i3 service here just as we do with Mate Polkit and Thunar, we can now also add a wants XFCE4 service here or XFCE4 panel service like that. And that should start the panel when we start the i3 
service here. Save and uh, Yeah, we can try to log in and log out and see if it worked at all. So let's just log out. Yes, log out. This is also highly recommended to do this quite often. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be working here now. Uh, you can see system CTL user status XFCE4 panel. Failed uh, start request repeated too quickly. And this is kind of related to what I just said there, that we have to close this uh, gracefully for otherwise it, it, I think this is what happens when we stop I3 there, that kind of also stops uh, the panel in a way that system D doesn't like. So it immediately restarts it. But then we have stopped I3, we have also terminated the X session and there is no X session to start the panel in and it ends up in this limbo mode here. But the thing is, this seems to happen a bit random, so sometimes it actually works. We can try, try again quickly here to just log out, log in and maybe, yeah, now we can see now it worked and we really didn't do anything differently here. Um, or I think that the difference was that it was actually not running now when, when we logged out. can try it again. Um, log in. Now it doesn't work. So that is one problem we need to solve. <clears throat> um, before I will show you how we, we do this, I want to show you another thing, which is related. Um, we open leafpad and then we do this unit description is equal to xfce targets or xfce applications and here we add wants xfce for panel dot service and we add wants lunar daemon service um, and then we save this file in our system D configuration save it as xfce dot target because this is a different type of unit it's a target unit and targets are like collections of units so you can put like multiple services in one target uh, and then you can start and stop that target instead of the individual uh, units like this. Uh, it is sometimes convenient to do this. Now, this is just to show you uh, how, how targets work here. It is kind of pointless in one way to create this XFCE target. Uh, and that means we can also, instead of having these two lines, uh, Thunar and XFCE panel we can just add wants xfce dot target here instead and that will replace this um, this should work it will probably work now since the bar isn't running if we close and log in yeah you see now it popped up the target or, or the panel anyways even if we didn't have have it in our uh, um, configuration there but um, we can actually not do this system ctl user stop xfce dot target you would expect that this would stop all the xfce programs now it's only the panel and thunar here you see nothing happens and this is because to fully configure one of these system d targets you also need to do this and it is kind of annoying, I, I agree if you think so, uh, but that's how things work. Uh, to actually add Thunar properly to this target, you have to add this line to its unit. So part of XFCE target. Now it is uh, system D will know that this is actually part of the XFCE target. Because if you think about it, it, it kind of makes sense in one weird systemd way here. That if we look at this target file, 
there is nothing that specifies what's part of this target. It only specifies that these are dependencies of, of the target, but it doesn't really say that these are part of the target, if it makes any sense. Um, so we add it to Thunar, we also add it here. We say part of uh, xfce.target. Save. And now, yeah, we can actually do this to, to illustrate that. If we reload, we reload the XFCE4 panel here. I'm just doing this to trigger a warning. Oh, not reload, restart is the verb. Restart. And it does, it does restart it, but we also get this warning here. And this is what I wanted. Um, that. Um, we did restart the, the service, but it actually restarts it without the changes that we have done to the file here. And we added this line uh, in this case. Uh, and it says here that we need to execute this command to reload units. Uh, and this means that every time you make changes to the actual uh, files, uh, the unit files, you have to execute this command for the changes to, to have effect. And this will reload all units uh, all user units here. So we do that uh, and then uh, it, it, it should work. Um, now I think we can do this. If we do system CTL user status donor daemon, it is active. But now if we do stop xfce target, you can see now it closed the panel. And now we can also see that the Thunar daemon is inactive. So we actually closed two or stopped two services uh, which were grouped together in this target. Um, and of course you can start them grouped like this. No, okay, now we started the daemon. I actually wanted to start the target. And here, this is completely fine. Even if the daemon is started, we try to start the target, which includes the Thunar daemon. It will not break anything. It's because uh, the target file only have wants. And wants is a soft dependency. It, it doesn't fail if it is already running. That's just good if it is. So this works and now it only started the bar for us. Um, but, the solution to the issue here, where the bar is sometimes visible, sometimes not, that is actually that we want to make sure that it is all all units that we have uh, started are closed gracefully. So we could actually do this. Um, this probably makes more sense now if I just do this. Uh, I add another one of these exec. So exec start that is our main uh, process to run with this service. Uh, exec stop is of course the command you want to execute after the main process uh, is finished. Uh, and then we could simply just add systemctl user stop xfce.target here. And this would work for this uh, particular issue we are having now. Now it will actually stop all the uh, xfce units gracefully for us every time this uh, uh, this process is finished and that by including that we should never see this issue now I can close I can log in and now hopefully or may, it might not work now since we haven't reloaded the daemon yeah I think that was the, the, the reason here now system ctl user daemon reload uh, and then we can simply log in, log out. It should work. Password. Now we have the bar as expected. We can open some terminal and some leaf pads, whatnot, and then just do a quick log out. Log in, and it should work now as well because now it always uh, terminates the, the XFCE services gracefully. Uh, 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 leaf pad open i3 service but the thing is 
This of course only works now for the XFCE target. Uh, and this is a problem that you might encounter uh, for other applications that are not part. And, and it is actually, I think it is, this also have the same issues sometimes. So you want, we want to be able to, to, or want to make sure that we close all graphical applications gracefully. Uh, so instead of using XFCE target, we will use graphical session target. And this is uh, a target that already is configured in system D. You can do this system CTL user list unit files, for example, and that will list all available units, both those we have created ourselves here i3.service, Mate Polkit. These are uh, our custom ones, but a lot of these are already configured in the system. Uh, we can also see some slices and here are sockets and at the bottom of this list we can see the targets that exist and graphical session target that includes uh, graphical applications of course uh, and it is all so so it's a really good idea to add this or really good idea it's uh, we really need to do this to, to fix these issues it's also good to add the no block uh, command line option here and I think that makes it so that it closes the applications faster. It kind of doesn't wait for them to close before it tries to close the, uh, or stop the next one. Um, but also, as I showed you in the last uh, or before here, uh, to make a service unit uh, actually part of a, of a target so it works to stop it like this, we have to add the part of uh, key to our units files and now we will add this to all our units here even i3 it, itself here but also Matea Polkit well I already had it there because I did this before so add it to this guy we add it to the our demon and this, this also, it's, it's completely fine to have one unit uh, part of multiple targets. That's, that's uh, not, not a problem. You can add it like this. You can also do it like this. So add them on the same line separated by space. But I kind of prefer to have multiple lines. Um, we actually add it to the target. The XFCE target is also part of... God damn it, part of part of graphical session target and to the panel. There. I guess we can see if um, status mate Polkit. Let's see if this is active or if this has also failed. No, this has, hasn't crashed here, but some applications are really sensitive about not being uh, terminated correctly like this. But now we have fixed that. Uh, now we just have to make sure to always add this part of graphical session target to all units we create here uh, from, from this point on. Uh, we also should do, we should also do this system CTL user reload or daemon reload and I know this is a bit annoying that you have to do this when you change the files but I thought in the next video we could look at how to set up uh, systemd uh, path units which uh, will watch uh, files for changes and stuff like that and we can actually quite easily set up a, a little systemd unit that will automatically uh, reload the configuration when we change it and I thought we could do the same thing with i3 uh, so it will automatically reload the i3 configuration when we change the files and stuff like that it's it's quite cool but it's also a bit weird to set it up but uh, we take that in the next video for now we use it we do this manually um, all right now it should work to log in log out every single time without any problems um, yeah it, I am quite certain it works now but there is one last thing I would like to add here to our XFCE configuration and that is 
you should install this package, in my opinion, F XFCE4 settings. It's uh, just the name of the package. It's not a command. So if you try to execute this, nothing happens. But this is actually the name of the package. And if you install that, it will install, yeah, as you can imagine, the XFCE settings application. So keyboard settings, display settings, and settings manager, which is like a control panel collected with get here. I will do this before I forget it. Uh, yes, restore the defaults. So, and you can do uh, like the classic setting the theme here. But as you can see, nothing happens when we set the theme. So even if I set it to dark, I'll wait a dark, it doesn't seem to be a dark theme at all here. Um, the reason for that is that you also, when you are using XFCE for settings, you also want this program running in the background. XFCE XF settings D. So when I start that, it takes some time, but now it applied the theme and we can see it on the bar. I think we can even see it on, uh, yeah, that's right. That is why I did that keyboard thing there, because this is important. If you try this at home, uh, XFC settings, oh, that seems really neat that now I can change theme here and it just uh, applies automatically immediately. That's really good. Uh, yeah, sure, it's great, but it comes with a price here and I will show you that. And that is that you get some keyboard shortcuts that are pre-configured in the XFCE settings. Uh, and these keyboard shortcuts are kind of problematic together with i3 here, specifically this one, XFCE4 pop-up whisker menu. The shortcut is super L. And that means every time I press the left super key, it pops up whisker menu. And sure, that is kind of great. But that also means that I cannot uh, perform any of the i3 key bindings now. So super D to bring up the uh, D menu. It doesn't work now because the super key is kind of occupied by this. So what I like to do is just simply select all of these, remove. And now I can press super key, nothing happens. Super D brings up D menu. Uh, then you might say, but I kind of want the key binding to open the, the XFCE um, menu like that. And you can actually get that easily here if we reset it to defaults again. We can see the command here, XFCE pop-up whisker menu. That is a command uh, you can execute from, yeah, from a key binding in, uh, set up in i3 instead. So XFCE for pop-up whisker menu. See, you can execute the command, it pops up the menu. That means you can bind this easily to a key binding uh, in i3 instead. So make sure to do this, uh, at least this one, but uh, I, I, I would recommend to, to disable all of these uh, key default key bindings. And also they all only have effect when the daemon is running. So if you install this package, and don't execute this except settings daemon. Uh, now when I press the Windows key, now uh, uh, th they are not in effect. So now I can bring up the menu and stuff like that. But as soon as you start the daemon, the, the um, key bindings start to, to have effect. I really wanted to highlight that thing because it's extremely annoying and every single time I have to look where is this actually configured it is here in the keyboard settings application shortcuts. All right, uh, what I want to get to is that this is something, this settings daemon is something you want to also start with system D uh, because it is related to the themes and, and stuff like that, the theme of the bar I mean. So let's create a unit for that as well here. Uh, leaf pad unit uh, description except settings D. And then I guess we add part of now because I just said so that we should always add this to all uh, graphical session dot target. And I guess this will also be part of um, xfce.target service exec start 
is equal to. We can also see that this command, by the way, it also have the same issues with the, its weights for window manager and session manager, and it actually have the same command line options as uh, the panel does. So we can add disable WM check and SM client disable here to, to speed up the start. Disable WM check and SM client disable. Seems to work. Nice. And we can see now that also leafpad is, is themed here. And as soon as I stop this, leafpad loses the theme. Um, that is the command we want to add to exec start. And we can also add restart on failure like that. Save that in our systemd directory here as xf settings d dot service. Uh, even if we added this as part of xfc target, this will not get started now automatically. Even if we have uh, in i3 that we want xfc target, uh, because yeah, this is the weird part here that it. It, it, it actually just looks into this target file to determine what to do. Uh, and that means we have to add XF settings here as well. Once XF settings D dot service. So we save that. And now it should also start uh, the settings daemon uh, with the session. Let's reload uh, the, the daemon one last time here. System ctl user daemon reload uh, and then we log out and then we log back in and hopefully this works now so log in yes i see a bar it's correctly themed it feels good i open leafpad it's dark because the daemon is running and we can also I press super key, it doesn't bring up the menu as expected. We can open appearance settings and we can change theme and it should apply on the fly. And this is how you configure XFCE uh, together with i3 in the best possible way. Well, now when I think about it, there is one last thing here. The thing, the reason I forget this is um, that um, I never get the, the error message here in this virtual box uh, se session and I don't think I have ever gotten it here on SUSE because I think SUSE might do some uh, uh, configuring or have some stuff pre-configured that I didn't have on my Arch system. So you might very well get this error message that we cannot really see here. But it is related to Dbus. Sometimes when you uh, log in and start start everything it, it's like everything works and it starts the panel but you get some stupid error message that dbus is not ready or something like that to fix that all you have to do is add wants dbus dot socket and specifically for xfce for panel but i think this is a good idea to add to all the XFCE applications, or at least this one, and probably to Thunar as well, and maybe even XF Settings D might want this. And that is also a good why it's nice to have uh, targets as we have collections, because we can also add that as a dependency to our XFCE target here, like this. Wants the bus socket, and uh, that is one of these uh, pre-configured. Uh, units that you can find in the system system D uh, configuration which it's good to know is located in root so file system here USR lib and I think this is the same location on all distributions uh, except uh, Nix of course but system D uh, or it is actually <laughs> the same location there as well uh, but whatever super sidetrack user so usr lib systemd user here you have all of those uh, user units that we looked at before or we saw in that list and here we can see um, the dbus socket 
unit file and also the debug, ser debug service unit file. They are of course related and it is to set up debug correctly and stuff like that. But specifically the, the debug socket here is important that it is ready uh, when we start uh, the panel. We can see that this simply just uh, seems to, to configure uh, an environment variable uh, but it also specifies the path to the dbus uh, socket here. This percentage %t is like a systemd alias for uh, a temporary directory or it's a specific temp directory but it is not slash tmp it is a different directory but whenever you see percentage character like this in, in systemd it is a variable and it expands to something else and this expands to to a path to to this temp directory i think we will talk more about this in in a later video how these uh, magic variables works and stuff like that um but to cycle back here uh xfce target now when we add this it will make sure that this uh, dbus socket is um, started and active and ready and whatnot here uh, before it starts the other xfce programs and that will make sure that you never get that stupid error message and i actually used to do that uh, or get that message quite a lot before i started using systemd to configure all of this now it is like rock solid i never get any issues it always starts the bar and everything else uh, properly when it is configured like this. It wasn't like that before I started using systemd. And just imagine doing this now without systemd. You would have to make sure that you have closed everything correctly before you start it and stuff like that. Make sure the dbus is ready, do that with a shell script or do it like this. It's much, much easier to set it up like this. Um, another thing, um, yeah, let's add this also to, to XFCE panel because I actually think I want to do this. Now we have our i3 service here. It starts XFCE target. I actually just created this to illustrate how targets work and how you can groove things uh, and so it would be more uh, understandable what this graphical session target is really about um, but uh, in one way it doesn't make that much sense to add this xfce target because i consider this i3 service is like our main main desktop service in one way we could, we, we could rename it to desktop and then just have i3 as the main process here um, what i'm trying to get to is that with the with our desktop with our main uh, 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 desktop service like this we want to start a bar and right now we are using xfce for panel service and we want to start a file manager daemon in this right now we are using thunar daemon and we want to have a uh, settings daemon running as well there are actually alternatives for this i guess kde has its own thing and gnome has a different uh, um, daemon for, for this what i'm trying to get to is that these are kind of main applications and you might want to switch uh, this in your personal configuration maybe you don't want to use xfce for panel and you want to use polybar instead and you configure a, a, a unit for polybar i thought we could actually do that in later videos in this series uh, configure a polybar uh, unit and then just simply replace xfc4 panel totally doable and easy to do um, maybe you want to do that but you still want to use thunar daemon and xf settings then it doesn't make any sense to start the xfce target then you still have to split them up like this and, and stuff like that so so i think the main applications like the bar the settings daemon file manager they are like main applications that that in my opinion works better to, to just declare them directly in the main service like this but then there are i in my personal configuration at least i have like a misc target with with a bunch of small applications that is not like main applications for example 
X uh, banish and things like that. Um, that works better to group them in, in a way. It doesn't really matter, I just wanted to illustrate that. And here we can also see that it, we, we can simply just do this. We don't have to delete that target or anything. I really like this aspect of, of this way of configuring system D that you kind of do everything with configuration files. We just start one single service, this one from our start script, and then we configure the rest of, of every of it with uh, uh, by editing files like this, and mostly by using this wants to de uh, define what what is uh, dependent on on each other and stuff like that. All right, uh, enough ranting, and um, instead we end the video here. I think it went well this time. Um, this is how we configure XFCE and i3. Next video, we look into these um, path unit types, which is uh, a way for that system D can uh, listen for file changes, and then you can execute services uh, on different types of, of uh, file events and stuff like that. In short, it's a neat way to, to, to uh, for example, reload the i3 configuration when the configuration file changes. But as mentioned, we will set it, set it up for systemd itself, so we don't have to do that stupid user daemon reload thing every time we, we make changes to the files. That can actually be done automatically for us. Um, but till then, have a great day, or great days, and thank you for watching, see you in the next video. This guy.